Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it is Matthew uh, with another episode of Waddy's channel. It is uh, Monday afternoon, uh, the 8th, and uh, it's uh, raining quite a bit today uh, here in Louisville, so uh, perfect time for me to come back down here and uh, make a few more videos uh, for the channel. Um, so for a few days now, in the last several episodes, I've actually been talking about, you know, some of my keepsakes. Now, for a long time, I've always said, when I've started these collections, these figures are pretty much going to stay with me forever. Uh, at no point in my life do I figure that I'm ever going to sell any of these collections off. Now, I've got so many duplicates that, yeah, of course, I, I buy so many duplicates that I do intend to sell those duplicates or, you know, I might have loose figures to go along with the card figures as part of my collection. But like those that I have three copies of, four copies of, five copies of, yes, of course, those are intended for resale value or resale purposes. But the main collections, those are for me forever. But what happens if, you know, I've ever go into financial ruin or, you know, I'm moving and I got to downsize or for whatever reason that I absolutely have to get rid of everything that I own, essentially, you know, when that heartbreaking moment happens, uh, what are five things that I absolutely must keep regardless, you know, what are, or, you know, what are the five things that I want to be buried with, essentially, now, would I really be buried with these items, of course not, that'd be stupid, you know, that'd be, that'd be wasteful, you know, these are like, you know, museum type stuff, you know, you don't, you don't want to be you you don't want that stuff to be you know buried and and uh, lost to history essentially. So, but uh, I finally got something in the mail today. So a couple of these items are so tiny that you know they could literally fit in your pocket. So uh, obviously, I I think these are really awesome pieces to add. So when I chose my five items. Of course, value or purchase price of these items are gonna pay an uh, are gonna contribute you know an instrumental amount to my decision. Now, something I paid four hundred dollars for compared to something I paid a thousand dollars for, like I got a carded LJN Jimmy Snuko that I paid seven hundred fifty dollars for. Uh, that is not you know a holy grail item for me. So, just because I might have paid $200 for this item, I might cover that item more than, you know, that $800 item over there. So, uh, it just because I paid more for a particular item doesn't mean I necessarily covet that item more. But, uh, so, I have five items here. Uh, they're not in any particular order. I'm just going to basically pull them. And I'm going to basically give my my decisions or give my explanation for why that particular item uh, means so much. So, so uh, the first item that I've selected, and for anyone that's basically been watching my channel uh, from the beginning, or, you know, not even have to be watching from the beginning, but have been watching from my channel for, for a long time, uh, you know what this particular figure means to me. So from Eric Boyer, wrestling writer, the uh, Bruiser Broder custom figure. So at one point, this was the most money I ever spent on an action figure. And I, it was a purchase price of about $250. Uh, at the time that I bought it, I was on deployment. So obviously I did have a little bit more income uh, coming in. So I felt like... At that time, yes, I could have afforded it, and you know I didn't you know worry too much about the, the price at that point. It was an absolutely amazing figure. Uh, once I I didn't really know much about the character, you know Eric he used to uh, put in his little eBay descriptions, uh, you know you know history of the characters and whatnot, which I used to love reading about. Uh, awesome pose, fantastic look, accessory. This figure had absolutely everything that you wanted in an action figure. So, perfect addition for my collection. Even better addition for my custom collection. And, uh, 
talking to Eric, he, he tells me that this was actually a prototype from a, from a customizer in Australia, a uh, very popular customizer, uh, Zashman. I actually came across a figure very similar to this one uh, from Zashman uh, probably a year or so later where you could find this figure on card, which was pretty awesome. But like I said, uh, this one was actually a prototype version. So not only being able to acquire this from Eric, but you know, one of his hi highlight pieces and an original from him, from Zashman and from Eric's personal copy or uh, collection. $250 compared to some of the other, you know, dollar valued items, not the most expensive anymore, but again, it's poss quite possibly my all time favorite figure from anything that we've seen. Still love the figure, still a highlight piece of my collection, regardless. Fantastic addition. You know, it's still small enough to the point where it's, you know, you throw it in a duffel bag or something. It's easy to travel with. You don't have to worry about, you know, packaging being destroyed or anything. So, yeah. Uh, obviously, this is going to mean a lot to me. And uh, it is going to be one of the first selections I make as part of my Holy Grail pieces or, you know, one of my top five pieces that... Uh, will stay with me forever, regardless of what happens in life. Number two. If there was ever one figure from the LJN collection that I ever was going to have on card, uh, didn't matter who it was from any series whatsoever, this figure had the bulkiness, he had the fighting pose, he had the color, an accessory. I mean, this figure had everything. He was a character I grew up watching, and he was one of my all-time favorites. And uh, he also happens to be one of the most rare and one of the most expensive figures you will ever find. And uh, this one cost me almost 3 k uh, Luckily, the, the, the seller... Uh, work with me on this one a little bit and it was an awesome seller loved doing business with them great guy all around kept me kept in contact with me uh, throughout the entire transaction just a great purchase and like I said this literally is the golden goose of my collection uh, apps this this is it this uh this really is the one figure I wanted above all else. Take away all the other carded figures of the LGN line. As long as I had this one, I'm good. This, uh, I, I'm still trying to, I'm, I'm still hoping eventually I land the Ultimate Warrior and Andre the Giant uh, from Series 6. Yeah, those are uh, two grail pieces for me as well. Andre, I mean, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, we're probably hovering around eight grand for that figure. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get that on card. One day, pop. Who knows? Andre the Giant on auction one day around two thousand dollars, maybe. It's possible. Uh, I just did pick up a uh, Haku uh, from Makari, so. For under a grand, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, Haku, not exactly a favorite figure of mine. So uh, not even close to a Holy Grail piece. But um, the Big Boss Man, definitely a Grail piece. Uh, something I just got in today. And I was kind of kind of torn. Uh, if either this one... Or the Wick, the Wendy Richter, or both should have been on this list. But this one, I think, is far more valuable, far more expensive, far more rare. Uh, I decided to go with the Roddy Piper Eraser. It's kind of funny to think that there are people out there uh, selling, yes, an actual rock and roll wrestling uh, 
racers, you will find a, a rock and roll racer uh, for about a thousand dollars on eBay right now. Uh, this one was at, at one point at about eight hundred dollars. Uh, the seller had it about six hundred bucks. Uh, we worked out a deal. I got it for about four fifty. Extremely expensive, super rare, probably one of the most rare pieces of the collecting world, and it's in incredible shape. Um, I am going to do the Winston Toys review at some point because with none of the Winston Toys uh, packaging, none of them have the names of the characters on the package. What I'm going to do is right now there's a Hulk Hogan figure uh, on auction. Right now I'm the only bidder on it. I'm going to purchase a new Hulk Hogan figure. When that, if I win, I'm going to take that package. I'm going to take the Hulk Hogan out. I'm going to put this in there and I'm going to do... Uh, a review of the Winston toys with all of the characters in their uh, packaging. This may not be 100% mint, but you know what? At least I could say all of the fig. I'll have all six figures and all six in packaging. So uh, the great thing with the Winston toys, the, the car just slides right up. You don't have to like tear it up or anything like that. So, but like I said, the Roddy Piper, one of the rarest pieces you'll ever find. I've probably seen two of these, you know, in the last couple of years. There's only been two uh, sellers I've seen that actually had this. Uh, an absolutely amazing addition. And you know what? A lot of people, I'm sure as kids, use these erasers as actual wrestlers. So, <laughs> uh, amazing addition. And one I've been talking about a lot in, in a couple of my videos Uh from LJN as well, another four-inch figure is the King Kong Bundy Thumb Wrestler. Cost me about three and a quarter. Super expensive, but you know what? Another one of those super rare figures. One of the, something that you're probably never gonna find. Um, are there people out there that probably have this figure? Maybe, but because I never see this for sale ever. I, I kind of feel like I'm the only one that ever has it. <laughs> uh, the, the the seller that I got this off of, uh, like I said, I bought so much of my collection uh, from him. He literally has almost everything you can imagine. Uh, Stinger GQ off of eBay. Incredible collection, incredible seller. And the King Kong Bundy Thumb Wrestler. For someone who despised thumb wrestlers for pretty much his entire life, to be so enthusiastic about thumb wrestlers and to consider the thumb wrestler action figures uh, as holy grail pieces, such a change in mindset uh, from you know early childhood to later stages in life to, to nowadays. But still, I mean, even I talked about it in past videos, the weight of the King Kong Bundy thumb wrestler compared to other thumb wrestlers, you know, huge weight uh, differentiation, such a fantastic piece. And of course you have to have a King Kong Bundy because of the rarity of this figure. Yes. At 325, huge price. Is it the most expensive compared to others that I've acquired? No. I mean, you got look at like Jake Roberts on card or, or ax AFA graded, Hulk Hogan, uh, white shirt on black card. You're talking, to, you know, those figures are easily over a thousand dollars, you know, uh, per per figure on card. Uh, and it was really hard to leave any one of those three figures off this list. But also, I figured that you know, if I was gonna choose something, I wanted it to be you know one figure from one line or something. Uh, yeah, I have LJN ben, uh, Thumb Wrestler and LJN 8-inch, you know, LJN Custom, but they're all, like, different, you know, versions, so. Uh, I could have gone with an Axe, AFA graded. I could have gone with the White Shirt, Black Heart Hogan, but. Uh, again, I, I figure that those figures can still be purchased. Like, if the house burns down and you want to find something again, the chances you ever come across these figures again are so slim. 
And what are the chances that you, you go on eBay and you want to spend $1,000 on this? You really don't want to. At four fifty. desperation. I, I bought this out of desperation because I really wanted to complete the collection. Otherwise, there's poss it's an eraser. Why would I do that? But it really is a great figure. Holding this in my hand, I'm super thrilled. The fifth and final piece, uh, Holy Grail piece that I picked up, and I think you guys already know, I, I've mentioned it quite a bit, uh, from original San Francisco Toy Makers, is the Blue Trunks Series 1 Ric Flair figure. So, even a loose uh, Ric Flair would probably cost you around 500 bucks. Uh the fact that I got this one for around five something, six hundred bucks, uh, is pretty amazing. And I think it was only like six hundred dollars because the guy cost uh, charged me. Uh, he charged me uh, insurance on this package as well. Oh, I gotta stretch my leg out. And uh, I'm kind of looking at this card because he said like there was some like kind of like damage to the bubble or something or or some kind of like damage to the card like creases or something but I don't know I'm looking at this card the card looks perfectly fine to me I mean a slight crease on the, the corners but I mean nothing that like really freaks me out I mean I maybe I just I'm not as picky as some people but I mean to me it looks fine I mean the most minuscule bubble lift in the right in the corner right here whatever it, it's perfectly fine with me. I, I love the card, and I love the bubble, and I love the Ric Flair figure. Like I said, among the original San Francisco figures, just behind the dark-skinned uh, Jimmy Hart as the most rare and most valuable figures, you will probably never come across this. And if you ever do, there's maybe a couple sellers on the entire planet that actually have this available. Uh, so... Ric Flair makes up number five as my Holy Grail pieces. Uh, do I have what I would classify as other Grail pieces? Like I said, absolutely. Uh, that Jimmy Snuka, I only classify Jimmy Snuka as a Holy Grail piece because it's so expensive. But I absolutely despise the the LJN Jimmy Snuka figure. I think it's one of the worst action figures ever created. Um, the white shirt, black heart Hogan, of course, because of the value of the figure. The axe figure, which I love, and because of the value, the you know the Billy Jack Haynes, the uh, Jake Roberts, the Coco Beware LJNs on card. You know those are all. Super great figures, crazy expensive on cards. So, of course, you know, Honky Tonk Man and uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan on card. Phenomenal figures. I just got in uh, a whole art portfolio of all of these different LJN posters. Uh, that's actually going to be one of the next videos I do. And I got all these tag teams, including the Heart Foundation uh, tag teams. That probably is like a $500 poster by itself, if not more. Super rare, super valuable. Crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm probably going to do a tag team tournament video next. And I'm going to follow it up with that uh, with that review of that, uh, with that portfolio. I don't know if I'm going to do it by phone or if I'm going to do it by, by uh, computer. But uh, that's going to be fun because I'm going to... I'm going to redo that Series 6 poster review because I'm going to have all the posters now with a lot of tag teams uh, included. So, All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to close here for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate your viewership. And I will talk to you in the comments. See you guys.